The next uh, uh, speaker is uh, General Kalatunga, Major General Ruben Kalatunga. He will speak on effects of reintegration modalities on ex-combatants in Kilinochi and Jaffna, a security analysis. Uh, General uh, Kalatunga is, uh, has written a, a very good paper, I believe, with, with something very interesting, and I let him share it with you uh, without disclosing it. He joined the Sri Lankan Army in 1984 and uh, is Masters in uh, National Security Administration. Uh, he is currently uh, the Deputy Vice Chancellor at the General John Kotlawala Defence University. Yes, please. Thank you very much uh, for the brief introduction, uh, Honorable Chair, the distinguished uh, audience, good afternoon. My presentation is focused on a topic that has been researched by me uh, on this effects of reintegration modalities on the ex-combatants in Kilinochi and Jaffna. This is a situation analysis. Before I start the presentation, I'll just give a background why I started this research. It is such a coincidence that I happened to be the Jaffna town commandant during the conflict and after the conflict again I, have, I was posted as a division command in the same area, same peninsula, same uh, region, where I met the families and also the rehabilitated ex-combatants. Earlier during the conflict, I met the families without the children, without the, without the combatants. But after the conflict, I met the families once again with these combatants that have been reintegrated into the society and they were resettled in the same area. So such a coincidence where I had the interaction with the families as well as the ex-combatant. That inspired me to do this research and I found a lot of interesting facts which are going to unveil on the screen a little while. Sri Lanka's long-drawn conflict for nearly 30 years with LTT has claimed more than 100,000 lives and devastated the country's economy. It was ended with a military defeat to the terrorist organization. Since the military victory was accomplished on 18th May 2009, more than 12,000 ex-LTT combatants were surrendered or have been arrested by the security forces in Sri Lanka. Government of Sri Lanka hurriedly prepared an outlined plan to rehabilitate and reintegrate these ex-combatants within the shortest possible time back to the society. After six years, 98% were rehabilitated and released to the society. The UNDP presents that violent conflicts cause poverty and poverty also increases the likelihood of civil war. UNDP further states that countries with low, stagnant, unequally distributed per capita incomes and heavily dependent on primary commodities face dangerously high risk of prolonged conflict. This is further exacerbated by what the World Bank calls the conflict trap. This is a new theory that has emerged in the recent past. This trap reflects the fact that once countries have experienced a conflict and addressed the conflict in the violent manner, there is a double chance of having another conflict within five to ten years. If they have experienced two conflicts, their chances of another is quadrupled. Under this background, there is a need to assess the situation of the reintegration process in Sri Lanka. There also are complaints and reports published in foreign media that ex-LTT combatants have problems after the reintegration. 
If there is a failure in reintegration, it could lead to frustration among the ex-combatants. Thus, they become vulnerable for social crimes. It is necessary to study and understand whether they are fully rehabilitated and will not resort to any type of violence thereafter. Therefore, the social, political, economic and psychological conditions of the rehabilitated XLTT cadres are expected to be assessed in this research in order to determine the success of the whole reintegration process. Now, this is the model that has been originated by the Sri Lankan authorities soon after the uh, war was ended. And as I mentioned before, there was a need to rehabilitate these ex LTT cadres in a hurry and reintegrate it into the society. So the government has prepared this model. This is called the 6 plus 1 model, as you can see on the screen. It has every element that was needed at that time to look into and address in their re uh, rehabilitation process. And having done that, the ex-LTT combatants, according to their various ranks and their training period, they have been categorized into various levels and the rehabilitation was conducted in segments. Some got about uh, one month training, some got about six months and some about two years. Now, the government uh, post-war two-prong strategy, the post-conflict peace building and reconciliation process took the assistance of two stakeholders. If you carefully look at this screen, you, um, I was trying to synthesize this with the Maslow's theory. The government strategy, the military strategy, as well as the, the, the administration uh, strategy of the government, which has been reflected upon the Maslow's theory, there are three layers, if you can see, the social element, the economic, economical element, and the political element. The, on your left hand side, the left corner of the slide, you can see the military strategy, how it was formulated from the, the gravest situation, that is the terrorism at the highest level from Sri Lanka, in Sri Lanka. From there onwards, how the military got involved. And passing all these three levels, at the end, the, the military is supposed to be limited to the barracks or their task and roles will be limited in the civil administration context. And on the center you can see the government administrative uh, approach. There it reaches the self-actualization uh, level of the Maslow's theory having obtained the sustainable peace at the end, passing all these three levels. Again, so on the right hand corner you can see the Maslow's theory in different levels. So I was trying to synthesize the entire picture into one model and see whether we have achieved this particular uh, goal. My objective of the study is to completely assess the reintegration model of uh, the Sri Lanka and find out the gaps and shortcomings of the Sri Lankan model, if there is any, identifying the challenges in order to further strengthen this model. The respondents, who are the respondents? I had very close interactions, I, as, as, as I mentioned before, during the war as well as uh, after the war. But this particular study, I did it in two areas, Kilinochi and Jaffna, and I had interaction with 30 to 40 well rehabilitated and reintegrated uh, cadres, representing all levels, as I mentioned at the beginning of this slide, the male combatants, female combatants, child combatants, disabled com uh, combatants. So this 30 to 40 group consists of all four groups. This is the area that I conducted my research, Kilinochi and Jaffna, in the northern peninsula, northern province of Sri Lanka. Now my analysis was divided into four areas. The social reintegration, economic reintegration, 
political reintegration and psychological reintegration. Ladies and gentlemen, the top three can be seen, but the last one cannot be seen. It is the most effective thing. It is the one that we have to understand. Even in the government strategy of this 6 plus 1 model, the psychological reintegration has been there, but still the real assessment has been failed. Therefore, it is needed to do a complete psychological assessment of the reintegration process. Let me show you some uh, uh, results of my uh, research. Firstly, the social reintegration. These are the areas that I was asking questions from these rehabilitated cadres. The place of settlement after rehabilitation program. 78% of this group were positive or they were happy and 22% did not. Living over one year at the present place, 91% and 9% were not. Positive feeling about the present living place, 78% like and 22% did not. Recognition by the fellow members, 89% said yes, we are recognized by our fellow members, but 11% not. Satisfied with facilities in the villages, 38% and 62% not satisfied. Participation in social events, 100%. Now when I say social events, it is not only the social uh, games or whatever, including the political events. So 100% of these ex-combatants in this group, they have been participating in one or another event. Continue the social aspects. Two holidays per week. Yeah, they were having two holidays per week and they were enjoying this two holidays per week system. Reading at least one newspaper, 92%. That shows the literacy rate of most of these uh, ex-LTT combatants. Watching at least one TV channel, 57%. That shows how far the TV has reached their villages. Watching movies, 65%. Usage of internet. I have put it in red color. I will tell you why. Uh, they were reluctant at the beginning to answer my questions about internet. Why? Because of this diaspora uh, uh, problem. My previous colleague was able to give you a comprehensive uh, brief on the diaspora and especially the, uh, the LTT uh, uh, members who are living abroad and having the influence to the people who are still living in uh, Sri Lanka, Northern Province. And because of this, they don't want to reveal that they are having the internet connection. So that is why it is 19%. Otherwise, most of them are having the internet connection. Participation in sports, 65%. Participation in picnics after rehabilitation program, 81%. Why I said picnic is because now there was a trend soon after the peace was dawned that families were reunited. They were re-established and re uh, built their whole life, then they wanted to enjoy with their families. Some, they have never visited certain places in Jaffna, even though they are from Jaffna, because of the conflict. So they wanted to go, especially in Kasharina Beach, was a beautiful area, so they wanted to go and uh, enjoy with their families. So this is the uh, research that I did uh, in social context. Well, uh, if you could kindly speed up. Okay. Economic reintegration, you can see, I will uh, restrict my uh, slides, uh, you can see on the screen. And the political reintegration, now is a very important point, is access to local politician in the area. 86% yes, they said they have the access, but 14% no, they don't know who, are the, who is the uh, local politician that they are representing, nobody. So there is a gap in that. And psychological reintegration, this is the one that I was harping on. Now, during the rehabilitation program, family counseling, academic and uh, vocational rehabilitation, uh, psychotherapy, occupational therapy, all, all these things were conducted. But after the rehabilitation, there was own trauma because of social rejection and uncomfortable feeling towards government bureaucracy because they were uh, associating with the LTT uh, terrorist organization. They, don't, they didn't have any type of government system. So once the peace was dawned, they were exposed to the government system. Now they have to go in line with the normal civilians. When they go to the post office, when they go to the bank, when they go to government office, they have to follow the normal system, which they are not familiar with. So now they are feeling very uncomfortable on that. The economic instability, of course, it's a self-explanatory thing. 
Then findings, these are my findings, I will go through quickly. Majority are satisfied with their life. I will uh, only uh, touch uh, uh, important thing. There are objections and social problems from the villagers, especially for the female ex-combatants. There are marriages which have been arranged but not materialized because they were ex-combatants. So this is a very, very important thing that has to be addressed in the social context. <clears throat> Some of the other findings uh, you can see on the screen. Now the last one, due to government agencies such as armed forces getting involved in minor construction projects, the skilled laborers are deprived of opportunity. This is uh, one thing that we, we understood. Soon after the war, the government uh, decided to put the, the armed forces on ground on nation building projects where we constructed the devastated area. Where these ex-combatants who were some skilled laborers, they were deprived of getting involved in this particular uh, development process and uh, deprived of their earnings. There are some collective challenges, the post-war development, consistency of development strategy. There is uh, uh, a need to have a consistency in development strategy of the whole country. Then the government strategy to balance security and development. This is also very important. When the development is happening, the security is sometimes compromised, which should not happen. So there should be some kind of synthesis in between these two and have a compromise to have a better security and development strategy. National development plan for Northern Province, a special plan has to be there to the national uh, development in the Northern Province, which is very vague. When I was uh, discussing this with the former governor of uh, Jaffna, I understood this. Allocation of funds, effects of development on national security. Individual challenges, these are the individual challenges where the, the ex combatants are now facing during the research time, right? So, point number three and point number four. Point number four was explained by my previous uh, speaker, Mr. Kasim, very well. The third one is the internal spoilers. Who are these in internal spoilers? They are the local politicians divided into various groups. They are personal interest or their individual interests are affecting on the individual interest of the ex-combatants. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bell General uh, Ruwan Kalatunga, uh, for a very good uh, paper, uh, particularly highlighting uh, that there is always a need to look for gaps in policy. Uh, which can be plugged in. Uh